Good morning, everybody. So this video, I would like to talk about um, mindset and how it affects our chemo and our, our life and how we handle our treatment. So, you know, back, back in 2013, I was diagnosed stage two B, I think it was, breast cancer. And it was devastating. My kids were still in school and I was a single mom at the time. And I really didn't want to do any treatment. And so I was very resistant to being treated. In fact, I didn't receive treatment other than a mastectomy to have the cancer removed um, for three years until I ended up with broken ribs because the cancer had metastasized to lungs, liver, bones, and lymph nodes. It was everywhere. But um, at that time, when I was re-diagnosed in 2016 with stage 4, I was much more receptive to, to the drugs. I'd always been really sensitive to drugs, and my body would react badly to them because I, I really didn't want to take them, but I was kind of desperate. So I'm drilling a little bit to drugs. Um, but, you know, in that, at that time, I really didn't want to do any kind of uh, IV chemos. Because I was really like, I'm, I'm, I'm active, I want to stay active, blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, I was really not into doing that. But then once I started taking the oral, you know, soft chemos, that's the eye branch, which is a CD, CDK4-6 inhibitor. So it wasn't like, you know, the kind that kills everything kind of a thing. But um, it, it, it was hard at first. But, you know, I once I got used to being stage 4, and I accepted the fact that I was going to be stage four, and that's how I'm going to live my life. And when it started responding, I'm like, wow, this stuff is working. So the way I thought about and felt about it changed quite a bit. And the side effects didn't seem so bad. You know, if you live with some, a pain or a problem long enough, it just becomes part of your daily life. And so I think with chemo and its side effects, you learn to live with the side effects. For instance, right now I'm on Herceptin and Progetta, and I get... Uh, colon issues. I get diarrhea or really soft poo and it just right before I need to go it just hurts you know and it's like oh god oh god it's coming you know it hurts my, my it hurts the colon where the descending colon meets the transverse colon so um, but I've learned to live with it it's better than you know having cancer spread to brain and lungs and livers again and <laughs> my chickens um, the chickens don't have cancers right little chicken down here hello babies <laughs> so but they just see what I'm doing but uh I'm talking to me. you know if if we fight our disease and when we are unhappy about it and we we think the drugs are killing us and we think they're poison guess what what you think about you bring about and your body is not going to not going to work with the medicines it's going to fight the medicines you know, so the best thing we can do is to think, okay, this medication is extending my life. Yeah, it's not going to be 100% pleasant. There are likely going to be side effects, but what can I do to make the side effects manageable so I can continue to live a full life as possible? So that's where I do a lot of research on how the medication is affecting my body and what kind of things I can do when I do them and how I do them. So for instance, after I have my, my infusion of the Herceptin and Progetta, <laughs> chickens, um, my stomach tends to be a little more sensitive, I'm a little more tired. So I make sure just to uh, eat a little more carbs, you know, more frequent meals, smaller meals because I tend to get really bloated. So you just, you just kind of figure out how to make your problems not such a big problem. And, and not be angry about it or, or mad or sad to say, okay, it's working, that's fantastic, now let's try to make the quality of life as good as possible. Because that's what it's really about, quality of life. So yeah, when you have cancer, it's not gonna be like, <laughs> it's not gonna be the same as it was before you had cancer. When you're stage four, nothing's the same again. But I can't say that it won't even be better. So I'm going to tell you that, you know, the decisions I've made since my stage four diagnosis, um, I think has improved my quality of life from what it was before I was diagnosed stage four. Um, I'm happier. I'm more productive. Uh, yeah, 
my body has more issues, but I don't really care because I'm happier. So who cares, you know, if I'm not as productive as I used to be? Heck, as we get older, we're not as productive as we used to be. So you can think of cancer and cancer treatment as just an, as somewhat accelerated aging process. All right. I mean, a stage four people, we know we're going to die. It's just going to happen. We're all, everybody, everybody's going to die. But why worry about it? Why, you know, why focus on it? You know, go out and do things that make you happy. That's what life is about. Everybody wants to know what the purpose of life is to go out. Stop picking at my pants. <laughs> Different chickens. You know, go out and have fun. Do things that make you laugh and share that with other people. There is so much negativity in the world and unhappiness. We just need to do what makes us happy. And then share that happiness with those around us. Because happiness is like laughter. It's contagious. And we need as much of that as we can get in the world right now. So, the, my takeaway message is, if you're stage four, or if you're any kind of disease that's that's hindering your life because of the drugs you're taking, think about it this way. If you stop taking the drugs, would things get better? Well, stage four, uh, no, definitely would not get better. In fact, things would go downhill pretty quickly, especially if you're HER2, like I am HER2 positive, because that makes things go really fast. So if it stops working, it'll it'll go downhill really fast. And then I'll have to switch medications and do the hard chemo again for a while, which I know is going to come. I accept that. But, you know, that's the thing. You have to accept your fate. You don't have to accept, you don't have to give in. But you have to accept that there's things that are going to happen that you can't change. So be pre prepare yourself for it. So if you know you're going to get diarrhea, well, just, you know, Make sure that if you have a certain time of day when you get that, like for me, it's in the morning and the afternoons, I get at least twice a day. I try to make sure I'm home or near a place where I can go potty that time of day. Um, if you know you're going to be tired or you're going to need to take a nap, make sure you schedule time for yourself to take a nap. But before that and after that, you can go out and have a great time and make some awesome memories and share them with people. Be productive like I am trying to do. Uh, but, you know, to lay in bed and, oh, I have diarrhea or my legs are cramping up or I have headaches, you know. My headaches are pretty sucky, though. But there's medication you can take for that, you know. At this point, if you're stage four or you're having chronic disease that's terminally, you know, going to, terminal illness or something that's going to shorten your life, go out and enjoy it. We don't have much time left, so go out and enjoy it. Who, you know, who cares if there's a side effect from a drug? If it allows you to live your life to what you consider a kind of a new normal, because that's what it is about once you're stage four, it's what's the new normal. And that new, more, new normal, <laughs> blah, 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 it can change. All right, I think my hair's growing back for me. Yay! But, um, you know, don't, don't worry about what other people think is normal, because everybody's different. You do what makes you happy. Don't worry about, you know, don't do what you think would make you happy from the past. Because that's that's in the past. That's living in the past. Live for now. Live for the future. And do what makes you happy. And don't worry about the drugs. But listen to your body. That's one thing a lot of people kind of, they don't do. They, they just take these drugs and then they have all these problems, you know, with the side effects. And then to try to pretend like nothing's wrong with them themselves and they, things just get worse. You have to listen to your body. You have to know what your body is like before the chemo or the drug and then what's happening after the chemo and the drug. So if you're about to start a new drug, keep a diary of your symptoms. This way your doctor can have a chance of helping you alleviate some of the symptoms. There's a lot of drugs for diarrhea and nausea that they can give you. There's even things that, uh, that are more natural like the CBDs and the cannabis oils that could help with nausea and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, oh God, you know, uh, appetite issues. You know, a lot of people, they can't eat or they're having cramps. There's a lot of things out there. Research it. And if you don't know how to research, I did a video about how to uh, do um, internet searches, which I'm going to hoping to do a couple more. Maybe next time I have a medication change, I'll try to actually research it 
uh, from my first time with you online. But the point is, don't let the medication scare you. I, I was a person who hated the idea of medications. And you know what? We all go through that, I think. But what we need to remember is, if you're, especially for stage four, like I am, that it's without it, I would have been dead. I would be dead already. I almost guarantee you I'd be dead probably at least two years ago. Because when I was diagnosed in 2016, I have the, I have the uh, PET scan uploaded on my channel. You would see how horrible my cancer was. It was in my liver, in my lungs, in my spine, in my ribs, in my lymph nodes. It was all over the place. It was in my ovaries. And they had I had took those out a couple like four or five years ago. Four years ago, I think it was. But anyway, it was bad. And so if I had not gone, gone to treatment because I was scared of it, I would be dead. I guarantee I would be dead. So I'm like, well, yeah, there's going to be some shitty side effects, but would I rather be dead? Mm, nah, I'm not ready to die yet. I know it's going to happen, but I'm not ready to die yet. I'm going to, I'm going to fight, you know, the death. You know, as far as for as long as I can, as long as I am able to be take care of myself to, the, to at least some degree, I might need a little help in the end. You know, but as long as I'm able to feed myself, clothe myself, help take care of the animals a little bit, you know, something, still be somewhat productive somehow. I want to keep living, and right now I'm I'm actually doing pretty good compared to um, how I was on my eye brands for three years. It that was a soft chemo, and it was kind of rough. But it, 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 it misses with your, your blood counts. And if your blood's not good, then everything else is kind of like, ugh. But, you know, it did. It worked really good for three years, so I'm not complaining. But now that I'm off of it, and I'm off the chemo part of it, of the treatment, I feel almost normal in the sense that my energy is more consistent. I still have, you know, side effects from the drugs. But they're manageable. I mean, there's people who have, like, Crohn's disease or uh, IBS, which I might have anyway because I have my autoimmune, but um, who, who live with the similar problems or even worse problems that I'm having from my side effects. So, you know, it could be worse. It could be worse. So just hang in there. You know, I think that if you're having a, a hard time mentally with this, the biggest thing to do is to make yourself laugh. Watch funny videos, watch funny movies, hang out with the friends who make you laugh. But if you're around people who are making you feel sad and guilty, especially if they're making you feel guilty, you need to kick those people to the curb right now because they are not worth having in your life. If they can't see how you're struggling just to stay alive, they're not worth it being in your life. If they make you feel bad in any way whatsoever, they're not worth having in your life. And I'm gonna, I think I say that a lot in my videos because I've been around people who, who try to make you feel bad for one reason or another. I don't have those people in my life anymore. Even people that I've called family, if they made me feel bad, yeah, they may be family, but it doesn't mean I have to spend any time with them because life is too short. <laughs> A stage four people, we know that. And it's not worth being around people, friends or family, who treat you like you're less than they are. So go out. Find people who make you laugh and smile. If not, go get get an animal because animals are great. I have, you know, horses and they make me laugh, you know. And then my chickens, they make me laugh all the time. They just do the strangest little things, my little friends. So, you know, I mean, when I got stage four diagnosis, what did I do? I sold my house. I bought an RV. I'm a full-time RVer. So maybe I can show that to you. So this is this is my um, you can see it behind me here. So this is my home. I've got a nice little cover here, but um, I sold my home because I want to have low bills. I don't want to have any stress related to money, and I I don't. You know I, I planned it. And that's part of redu reduce blah, 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 reducing the stress because cancer is stressful. Of course it's going to be stressful. But you do everything you can to reduce stress. And a lot of it has to do with planning ahead. Like, okay, I know I'm not going to be able to work. Because as, as a teacher, I have to be there every day for my students. And chemo doesn't allow that. 
In fact, when I was actually going through chemo, it knocked me on your, my butt. I was sleeping a lot throughout the day, off and on throughout the day. And there's no way I could have been teaching then either. And my eyebrows was, it was exhausting. So I mean, I, with eyebrows, I was probably about half strength. But, you know, I still was able to function at some level. But teaching, it was, I, I tried teaching when I was on my eyebrows at first and it just, it wiped me out. So um, you have to plan ahead as much as you can. Um, if you don't know, if, if money's an issue, you know, talk to social services, uh, wherever, I, every country's a little bit different with that, and every state's a little bit different with that. But, you know, if you don't know who to talk to, ask your doctors. They usually, doctors and uh, do, do, medical groups, they usually have people you can talk to that, who can tell you uh, who to talk to regarding help, fi financial help, all right? Depends on how much money you make, if you're married, you know, if you're single, it just depends. There's a lot, a lot of uh, things affect you know how much help you can get from the state or the federal government but uh but if you don't ask you don't know and and not knowing is very stressful so ask your doctors if you don't know about that but you need reduced stress um again having good people around you you know and uh, helping whatever you can and then you know and hopefully people will be able to help you like i have a good friend of mine he and he's a uh, he and his wife uh, take me my, to my infusion slash chemo sessions because when I when I take my I just it knocks me on my butt for the day, but the next day I'm usually much better. But you know it's it's important to have good people around you, people who who you can talk to or who might be willing to help you out here and there, you know if you need it, and then people that you can return the favor and help out when they need it. I mean that's that's what we're here for. We're here to help each other out because it feels good to help people. So. Um, Anyway, this video is getting really long. I'm just so good at like yapping and taking forever on these videos. But if you're feeling bad about about taking the drugs, just remember, we'd be better without it. If not, then learn to live with it. If you think you can go on without doing the drugs, then talk to your doctor about that. It is a choice you have. You don't. No one's forcing you to take these drugs, whether it's for cancer or not. You have a choice. Of what drugs you want to put in your body if you don't want to put those drugs in your body then don't but you have to understand the potential consequences of those actions and i will be able to talk about in america oh freedom of speech this and that well yeah you can say whatever you want but every action has a consequence and sometimes those consequences are unpleasant like when you tell lies about people you know and you make it public and it's called defamation and people can sue you for that so yeah, it's a frequency and you, you know, you have choices, but you have to be aware of every action has a consequence. So if you don't, if you think you can do better without the pharmaceuticals, then talk to your doctor and say, Hey, I, I still want you to be my doctor, but I don't want to take these drugs. Can you still, can you still work with me? And yes or no, if not, you can find a different doctor. A lot of medical groups will allow you to have a different doctor who will be more receptive to your ideas. But you need to be happy with it. You need to be as comfortable as possible with your treatment. If you're not comfortable with it, then how can you make it more comfortable? Do you need to, do you need more information? Do you feel like you need more uh, freedom and of choice of how you treat yourself? You need to ask yourself, what would make me feel help, happier? And then you need to pursue that, whatever that is. Because that's what life is about. It's about being happy. So find what makes, think about what makes you happy. What would make me happy? What would make me happy? And then pursue that anyway again so go out find your happiness share it with others and live life to the fullest because none of us know when our time is going to come have a great one